Welcome to another edition of Transparency in Government. It is April 2017 and we're here with Town Manager Kevin Smith and Kevin is going to bring us up to date on what's going on around town and hopefully give you some information on things you want to know about. Dottie, great Hi, to be with you here on another month. Happy, happy April, spring. I know. Yeah. Weather's getting yeah. better. Mm-hmm. Yep. Always a well, good thing. Well, we were thing. talking about my dad a few minutes ago. Yes. Okay. And one of his other sayings, we're talking about some of the things he used to say, and one of the, his others was, um, spring has sprung, the grass has riz. I wonder where the flowers is. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't write it. He didn't write it. His poetry was much better well, than there that. There are a lot of flowers. But it is really popping nice. Up around yeah, town it's getting too, nice. So it is. It yeah. is very nice. Yep. Yeah. So on to real business yes. here, Kevin. What's going on? Well, there's always a lot going on, Dottie. Where do you want to start? Traffic. It's Where? impacting everybody. <laughs> the 102, 93, it's like getting kind of crazy. Well, I guess the best way I can put it is uh, it's only going to get worse before it gets better. I was afraid of that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, there's, you know, this is the last major portion of 93 that needs to be expanded and fixed. Mm -hmm. um, and both the bridge going over 93 along 102 and the Ash Street Bridge are both being reconstructed and moved. Yeah, um, you have this. That's a major undertaking. Well, yeah, you have this image of a bridge getting lifted right. and carried down yeah. the road, but not quite. No, not not yeah. quite. But once getting moved, the the bridge that, that's on 102, that's getting moved a little further south. Mm -hmm. The the Ash Street Bridge is going a little further north. And are we going to do one and use the other one while the first one's down? How is this working? Uh, How do we get across 93 you know, with well, all this Dottie, going on? I you know I know I look like an engineer, but I only play one on TV. I, you know, <laughs> they, no, the, the quick answer is no, they're not going to shut down one bridge and use the other bridge, but it, there's just going to be a lot of traffic mitigation going on while they, you know, I think how it happens is, uh -huh. <laughs> I could be totally wrong on this. <laughs> how he's so, winging this. <laughs> I think what happens is they start constructing a portion of the new bridge. Mm -hmm. And then they'll move everybody over to that newer portion while they take down the old, the old portion one? of okay. the bridge. But, you know, the median strip is being taken out there. That'll be reconstructed and, and put mm -hmm. back in when mm -hmm. the new bridge is constructed. But the bottom line is there's just, there's a lot of construction going on in that area. Um, so it's, it's going to be congested for a while. I mean, I think the completion date is around 2019. Um, so, <laughs> okay. the good news is when it's done, it's going to work beautifully and, you know, the hopefully the backups that have occurred in the morning going over that bridge mm -hmm. will be greatly alleviated um, when this is all said and done. But we also have that thing going on where people see something like a cone yeah. that was left on the side of the road by mistake. And the next thing you know, traffic is practically Slows at a halt well, that's because the they thing. think something's going to happen and there's nothing there. Yeah, I mean, between, so <laughs> just between the regular traffic equipment, mm -hmm. um, the police detail, people's curiosity when you drive up the there. The curiosity I mean, is really bad. There's that so many trees that are down now. You can see things you never saw before. Right. Yeah, and that's, you know, so people are looking around yeah. as they're yeah. driving. Yeah. I mean, it's really, it's a... Upping it's that a, curiosity factor. It's definitely a sight yeah. to behold when you, yeah. when you drive up there it's now. It's naked. It is. I hate it when you cut down trees. But the nice thing about trees are, you know, you plant new ones and they grow again. <laughs> um, so, you know, I mean, and that's part of the, you know, the construction is you got to take trees down. Um, but as I said before, you know, they'll, and if you look at the areas where they have done the newer construction that are already complete down by exit three or exit five. They didn't put trees back. Well, they didn't put they as put, many trees back, no. but you do, new vegetation will grow in I know. over time. We'll be long gone. I'm Dottie, a lot older than you. I'm going to say I'm <laughs> a lot older than you. I'm never going to see those tall of a tree again well, on that area. I, pro we pro I probably won't either, but <laughs> our... The people coming after us will see them. Okay. So, so yeah, so 
traffic, it's going to be there for a while. You know, mm -hmm. take exit five if you can. That would be my suggestion mm -hmm. um, if you're if you're able to do that. Or go down 111 and, and go to exit three if you have yeah, to go south. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's um, so it, it's you know we knew it was mm -hmm. coming. The other issue, of course, is when Woodmont starts doing their intersection improvements, which More. aren't happening this year. Those, those will happen next year to Gilcrest in 102, mm -hmm. Garden Lane in 102. Mm -hmm. um, that'll, of course, will contribute yeah. right. to the traffic. Yeah. Um, now, I saw they put traffic lights on Ash Street yes. extension. What... Um, my, Are those going to have to get moved again? If you well, said they're going to expand that, my is, um, understanding that is that those are temporary lights while the construction is going on. That's why they went up so fast. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> not. They're not intended to be permanent light okay. fixtures there at that Just intersection. Just to help with the construction issue at right. the moment, aren't they? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, it's you know, it's coming up, but uh, you know, it's it's great that the state undertook this. <laughs> Mm -hmm. project of widening mm -hmm. I-93. It badly needed yeah. to be yeah. widened. Um, it's going to help, you know, bring more people into the state, more tourism, mm -hmm. more business. Mm -hmm. um, it's that, you know, that's a good thing for I, the state. It definitely is a good thing. It's just such a hassle at the moment. And it just seems to happen so often, of course, because you can only do that stuff in good weather right. or decent weather. Right. That, you know, you're headed off to someplace fun and you just can't get there. Yeah. Um, the one of the things that people have been asking me about, and I don't know, I didn't pay a lot of attention yeah. back a, f a few years ago, and it's being discussed a lot, is Exit 4A. Yeah. Where does that come on, come into the well, process? It's a, just, Where it's on a, the highway is that going to be? It's a little further north of the Ash Street Bridge. A little further north. A little further north. Um, and it goes east into Derry. It, mm -hmm. it meets up with Sinead Road mm -hmm. in Derry. Mm -hmm. um, so it goes through land that's currently owned by Woodmont Orchards. Okay. Uh, and, and goes into Derry. So it's it'll gonna have meet an, up with Sinead Road. Yeah, it'll have, and you can go online and see it too. Mm -hmm. There's an exit 4A uh, website where people oh, can go okay. and right. actually see mm -hmm. the, the design and mm -hmm. where it comes out. Um, there will be access from north and south mm -hmm. to get off, but as I said, it'll only shoot east into Derry, and there'll be stubs going into the Woodmont Commons development. So when it goes east into Derry and it connects up with Shanita Road, yep. is it going to like come down by the police station in Correct. Derry? Yep. Okay, right, right around that down area. Down in that area. Yep. Okay. So right. and that is that's still going mm -hmm. forward. Mm -hmm. It's still happening. Um, the latest on it is that it's still going through this environmental impact. Mm -hmm. study. These studies take years to complete. Mm -hmm. Currently the the um, study is slated to be the, the whole process of the study because there's a public hearing and a, a, and course, a public yeah. comment mm -hmm. part of it and everything mm -hmm. else. The whole thing is slated to be done though in 2019 so that construction That's most likely will begin on 4A in the spring of 2020. Okay. So just as the I-93 project is finishing up <laughs> 4A <laughs> will start. Okay. Yeah. And when, now you say it's going to go east into Derry. What about the access into London Derry? How is that going to help us well, there? Well, it really, I mean, it's it's really to alleviate the traffic off of um, Crystal Ave. Okay, because there's a definite conception out there, or perception out yeah. there, that it's going to come down by the Woodmont Orchard project. Well, again, it, it does have stubs into Woodmont Orchard, mm -hmm. but it's the Woodmont Orchard but land the that is east of 93, not on the west side of 93, okay. but on the east side of 93. So it's on the okay. other side of mm -hmm. 93. The dairy side. The dairy side, mm -hmm. but it's in London Dairy still. Mm -hmm. there'll, be, there'll be stubs coming off of that ramp, that exit ramp, which will mm -hmm. be about a mile long, that will go into the Woodmont Commons project. Mm -hmm. If you if you don't go into the Woodmont Commons project though and continue going further east, it'll as I said, it'll dump you into Derry around Sinado Road. Okay. And again, part of that is to alleviate the huge amount of traffic buildup at rush hour mm -hmm. going into Derry. I mean, mm -hmm. we've all experienced right. that if, yeah. if we've ever well, driven Well, I, I, I got the sense that people were concerned that it was going to be dumping a tremendous amount of increased traffic onto the area 
of Londonderry where Woodmont Orchards is on the on the west side of the highway. Yeah. So that doesn't sound like it's going to be no at, that large. Of an certainly not at this point. The, no, okay. because all, all right, of the that's good to know. all of the public feedback at the mm -hmm. time was people didn't want it going west. Right. Yeah. Into yeah. the other side of mm -hmm. Woodmont Commons. Yeah. Uh, and so with that public feedback, the design of it was to only have an easterly mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. exit, not a not a westerly exit. So, okay. so that is the the plan at this point. So therefore, okay, transparency in government. Yes. you can get involved and you can have an impact on yes. the result, the outcome. So that's you can. that's a good thing to. Yeah. Yeah, that was what the out there. there was a lot of strong opinion I about it not that, going for sure. west. Yeah, and, yeah, and that. That was mm -hmm. heard, mm -hmm. you know. Good. Yeah. Good, good, good. Okay. So. So that's traffic. What about the other areas of town? Have you got any other major construction things we need to be worried about or go around? Uh, not major construction, but if uh, people are interested in the different town roads that are going to be resurfaced mm -hmm. and repaved this mm -hmm. uh, spring and summer, then go on the Public Works website and the, the list of 2017 constr road construction mm -hmm. projects right. uh, yeah. is up on the website now. Mm -hmm. And they usually put that information on the um, Access Center yes. channel on, on the bulletin board. Yep. So it's usually up there as well. Yep. So if, you, know, you can check there between yeah. shows. So yeah, so people can go on, like I said, and, and see what roads mm -hmm. are going to be impacted uh, this spring and summer okay. with new, new construction work. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Yes. All right. We're ready for summer in New England. A lot of road work going on, that's Always. for sure. Always. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. So. Um, economic development. Yeah. Is there anything cooking for the summer? Well, You've always I got mean, something the, up the your big, sleeve. you know, the big projects <laughs> right now, Dot. I mean, there's a few that are in conceptual phase right now. Um, uh, nothing, I would say nothing that most people don't already know about mm -hmm. as far as major um, economic development projects. Okay. You know, the big one this summer that people are going to see is the Woodmont Commons mm -hmm. project start mm -hmm. to kick off its phase one. Yeah. Uh, of course, that Did you let them know that I plan on Christmas shopping there this year? At? Woodmont. Christmas yeah. shopping where? At Woodmont. Oh. With the, you know, they're going to have the little walking areas yes. and everything. Yeah. So well, am you, I planning you, a little you, aggressively you might here? Be, you might be walking <laughs> on grass, uh, <laughs> looking at trees still. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the phase one uh, that they just got approval for from mm -hmm. the planning board is really um, the new access road yeah. going up to Pillsbury. Mm -hmm. That'll be a major part of this project. I mean, that's the okay. main thoroughfare. Construction will start on that this spring. Mm -hmm. um, so that roadway will probably be open by the fall, mm -hmm. um, okay. which will, you know, that's a new major road in town mm -hmm. um, because as it is now, when you're going into Market Basket, people go one of two ways. Either they get it on 102 and go up Garden Lane uh, or they do the cut through through the London Dairy oh. Commons, mm -hmm. uh, retail area, mm -hmm. and they go to that terrible four-way intersection that everybody nobody ever knows who who's going, going which when. way yeah can we put something there like even like a well little flashing yellow light part of the part of the Good issue Lord. with that dotty is and and we're always looking at it and studying it part mm -hmm. of the issue though is that you've got some private drives I, there i was just going to say it's private yeah. yeah so that's that's part mm -hmm. of the problem with that mm -hmm. intersection but with this new roadway going in through to pillsbury um, it ought to divert from that a lot. There's hope that uh, that's going to divert a lot of the traffic now, mm -hmm. um, which will not be coming down Gilcrest anymore, but mm -hmm. instead will be turning onto Pillsbury Road and going down what will be called Michael's Way. Yes. So it's really right now it's Garden Lane that's mm -hmm. getting extended, but mm -hmm. once it's fully extended, that'll be all called Michael's Way. Okay. So that's a major part of their development. The other thing is uh, the brewery, mm -hmm. the brew pub that's going to be going in. Uh, as yeah, part of I've Woodmont Commons. That. Yep. Um, that'll probably be under construction as well mm -hmm. uh, this summer. Um, Almost looks like we're going from apples to beer. I would have gone apples to cider, but you know, yeah, the well, town's going to be famous for its beer. We have a lot of we do. breweries. We do have a lot of breweries. Between London Dairy and Dairy, there are yeah. um, quite a few, which is it's great for the local economy. Yeah. Um, you know, people do the beer tours mm -hmm. um, now. Mm -hmm. Of course, you need a, an Uber ride by the end of it. Um, but nonetheless, it's uh, it's drawing people in. Mm -hmm. 
um, to, that go to the different breweries and uh, there's proposal and talks about another one in Londonderry um, up off of 28 yeah, I headed towards that. Manchester yeah. so um, you know look it's a it's becoming a big industry craft mm -hmm. beer and uh, brewing is becoming a big industry in New Hampshire I think it's kind of funny that that um, at the same time as the uh, the the um, soda tonic wherever you're from industry is going down in numbers yeah like they're used there's, there's like 10 percent production each year yeah. goes down they're filling in with other things yeah. but and now the brew's going up yeah yeah <laughs> so, it is well i mean i thought we were replacing it with something like really healthy like water <laughs> uh, we did have lithia springs we at did one time, at one Donnie, time yeah you know? yeah that's not taking off though <laughs> no it isn't it is not uh, so yeah, I mean it's okay. so that that'll be the, you know people will start to see that under construction mm -hmm. uh, this summer. Okay. Um, but other than that, you know, as far as major you know economic development mm -hmm. projects this summer, work continues on FW Web that should be completed by this fall. Okay. Same thing with EFI up by the airport that should be completed by this fall too. And there's always interest in the land up by the airport. You know, we've had some some uh, companies reach out to us. Uh, can't disclose who they are, but um, they're well, that they're kinda, looking in the area. It kind of detracts from the transparency part of the show, but that's I understand. There are certain things I, I, I can't disclose. Negotiations yeah, and everything, so, yeah. um, but you are now. We're going to segue into something else yeah. for a second here. Um, you now have more time to devote to economic development because you have an assistant. I do. Yes, and I'm. Um, Hoping that we'll have her on Absolutely. here soon, yeah. And so that the rest of the town on. can yes. meet her because uh, I, I have not met her myself, but from what I understand, she is um, quite proficient in many things. She is. Uh, she's been a, a, a great um, addition mm -hmm. to the town hall staff. Lisa Drabic is her yes. name, um, and she's uh, she's an attorney uh, mm -hmm. by trade, mm -hmm. um, but uh, has just, uh, as I said, been a been a great addition for us at town hall. She's uh, both the assistant town manager and personnel HR, director, yeah. um, and has uh, um, just really done a great mm -hmm. job of coming into the role and. Uh, you know, there's a, quite a big learning curve, mm -hmm. um, but she's handled it very well, and uh, I look forward to having her on this show. Oh, yeah, we've got to have so her So she on. can talk more about her background yeah. and where she came yeah. from and mm -hmm. also the, the initiatives. And then sometimes instead of calling Kevin, you can call That's right. Lisa. right. You can call Lisa. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but, yeah, she's got some great initiatives going, mm -hmm. going on right now. Good. and. Um, yeah, it yeah. Just, now she's uh, researching the senior transportation and how we might be able to move yeah. forward with that. Right. Yep. So she's looking into that, and mm -hmm. you know the the big thing is going to be now that we've appropriated thirty thousand dollars. Thirty five. Thirty five thousand dollars. Thank you, Dottie. <laughs> um, you know what is what is the best way to make use of those funds right. in the next fiscal year? How yeah. can we make yeah. it most effective? Mm -hmm. um, because what we still don't know is what is the need. What is the need? What is the utilization going to be? Um, and to try to get a better handle on that mm -hmm. before we decide, you know, how how best to supplement the gap right mm -hmm. now. Do we do it through taxi vouchers? Do we do it through beefing up cart? Do we do it through our own bus service? Those are the things we got to work sure. through. Yeah, um, yeah I something think, that works and stretches that money as far as you can. Right. Yeah, Those well, two and, and meets the needs of, of the seniors yeah, in, the, yeah. in the community. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I will say is that, you know, as we as we get more 55 plus housing in town, of course, we have an assisted living facility mm -hmm. where we are going to have affordable senior housing, which, by the way, that project is moving forward um, and should have its approvals on Sanborn, on that, Sanborn okay. Road, mm -hmm. should have its approvals this spring, mm -hmm. okay. um, <clears throat> which is great that we're going to have affordable mm -hmm. senior housing yeah. Uh, yeah. in town. But as we get more of that, um, there's, there's, I mean, we have a very vibrant senior population in our community. We have a great senior center. We just put mm -hmm. an addition on mm -hmm. that. Um, and so we're going to want to meet the needs of our, our seniors. You know, right. we always talk about meeting the needs of our school children, which isn't a bad thing. We should be mm -hmm. talking about that and what the yeah. needs of the, the schools are in the next five, 10, 15 years. But we also have to ask a question, what are the needs of our senior yeah. population? Yeah, the best community has has like a one-third, one-third, one-third. Yep, 
you know, so you've got the, I, I you've got the, the, the younger people, the older people, and the in-between people. Right. And that gives you the most vibrant community. Yeah. It, it, it really it's, does. Yeah. It really does. And you really, you want that mix. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. you, want, yeah. you want young families, mm -hmm. you want established families, mm -hmm. and you want folks who want to retire mm -hmm. here and are able yeah. to retire yeah. uh, in our community. So, um, but we have to make sure we, we address those needs mm -hmm. too. That you know, great. And, and transportation yeah. is, is a big part of that. Yeah, yeah, Def it definitely is. Um, with, um, I have, as you know, a million opinions, so if she needs any, have her give me a I call. I didn't know that. I, I do. I, I admit it. <laughs> Not always good ones, yeah. but I have them. Uh, but one of, one of the things that, that um, I was curious about is there was a, 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 I don't know specifically where they were authorized from, but I know there were some people that were going around to the senior communities mm -hmm. in town mm -hmm. and asking them what their needs were. Have they completed that? Because, well, I'll ask, tell you why I asked. Because yeah. there's a lot of us that don't live in those communities. Right. And I was curious as to whether or not they were going to have some means of getting and asking opinions of others. Yeah, that I believe was being spearheaded by the Senior Resources Committee, committee? in town, okay. which was formerly mm -hmm. the Senior Affairs Committee. Yes. Um, but that sounded a little too salacious to It does. Body, so it we does. Yeah, it we're not that vibrant. Resource. We're not that vibrant. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> So uh, I don't believe they've completed that yet, mm -hmm. um, but I'll check on that between now and the next time yeah. uh, I'm yeah. back here to see. Because the last thing you want to see is me with an ingrown opinion <laughs> yes. that has not been no. expressed. Okay, so. <laughs> Absolutely not. But yeah, it would be it would be great to. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the other issues that we're tackling and looking at right now is growth management, mm -hmm. um, because as you know, as people see new developments coming in, there's a question of you know, they okay, get nervous. how do we, yeah, yeah, how do we keep up with it in terms of services mm -hmm. and not lose the traffic, flavor of our community, all of that, um, and you know, for folks who are new to the newer to the community who weren't through the last growth management process, mm -hmm. it's a real educational process, mm -hmm. you know. Yes. Growth management is not as simple as saying, uh, you know what, I think we've got too much growth going on, so we're going to stop. stop it. Yep. Can't do it. It doesn't work that way. No. There, that, are, that, yeah, there are state yeah. laws that govern what mm -hmm. towns and cities can do as far as managing mm -hmm. growth, and there are town ordinances as well with, uh, which go along with how, how towns manage growth. Yeah. Um, and what you can and can't do. Mm -hmm. Property owners have rights, and it's important for people to, to remember that, that yeah. when talking about what people can and can't do with their mm -hmm. property. Yeah. Um, that being said, it's also prudent to watch your growth in a town. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, if if you look at the population growth in Londonderry, the big boom was in the 80s and 90s. We're not seeing anything close to that. No, no, no. Right we don't now. have a boom. No, no. <laughs> there's not a boom going on. And in fact, if you look at building permits mm -hmm. in the last few years, while they've been higher than they were over the last five or 10 years, they're still nowhere near what they were a decade ago or two decades ago. Mm -hmm. um, it's still, it's, it's slow growth. It just, it seems like a lot's coming in right now because we haven't had a lot in a long time, mm -hmm. um, but it, but comparatively speaking, it's not anywhere near where what it was it be, previously. Yeah. Yeah. And also remember in that time where we did have a growth management ordinance mm -hmm. and we did kind of bring growth to a halt, we built a new police department, we built a new town hall, um, we did upgrades to the schools, built additions onto there, mm -hmm. um, really the only building that uh, hasn't been touched yet is the central fire station. Mm -hmm. And we're looking at putting that on the warrant for next and March. And also the wing that can, that holds the school district office. Yes. I mean, correct. I know the, the town hall was, was right. expanded and, and or built, but the yeah. their office has not been touched in no, like it hasn't. decades and decades. And, I'll, and maybe you can so. bring that up with Nate when he's on oh yeah we we'll definitely shortly. yeah we, we can talk about that too but just talking about town facilities mm -hmm. the only town facility that really needs an upgrade and it really has nothing to do with growth mm -hmm. it just has to do with its outgrown age. its age and and 
how the community is mm -hmm. gone from the 1970s till now is Central Fire Station, right. and that's something we're looking at, mm -hmm. as I said, in the next on the next uh, March ballot. Right. Um, so from a from a capital standpoint, from you know buildings, mm -hmm. we have everything that we need right now in place. And you know, as far as a growth management ordinance, there's specific criteria that has to be met in order to say, okay, we're gonna have a GMO in place. And by the way, having a GMO in place also doesn't mean that it's a full halt on, mm -hmm. Might on just building be a permits. Slowdown it's just a, you get to cap how many permits a year, mm -hmm. uh, building permits a year you yeah. give out. So I think it would be very important because the growth management issue certainly has been big news recently mm -hmm. with the Stonehenge project, Stonehenge Road project. And I, I personally feel very bad for the people up there because um, there's definitely not a real understanding of how growth management works. Mm -hmm. And I know they, they think that, well, wait a minute, why don't you fix this? If you know this is not a great situation to put us in, yeah. why don't you fix this? And it cannot be fixed because of these laws and ordinances that are in place or were in place at the time that right. the development was right. uh, was started, was was proposed. Um, I think that's something that we need to work on is, is make sure we can figure it sometime maybe in the near future, put something out there that really explains that whole process and how it works so that people will understand that it also is important for them to get involved yeah. ahead of time, not reactive at the at a point when it's going to affect their well, neighborhood. Well, that's just it, Dottie. And, and you know, one of the, one of the positive um, aspects of both what social media has now provided, but also <laughs> In a, in a project like the Stonehenge Road mm -hmm. Project is that it's brought new people out. You right. know, there's, mm -hmm. I, I'm oh, yeah. getting emails now mm -hmm. from folks who are mm -hmm. learning about the process, educating yeah. themselves yeah. and starting to get involved. Mm -hmm. and, and you're absolutely right. You don't want to wait until suddenly uh, development's going in that's abutting your home. You want to start- And you had you, no idea. And you had no idea. But oftentimes it is what gets people into the fray. It is, Is yeah. they get that first notice mm -hmm, that, mm -hmm. oh, something's going in near me, I better start paying attention. Yeah. Uh, and, and oftentimes it's, the train's already left the station at, at that point. Mm -hmm. Not always, but, but sometimes, a lot of times yeah. it has. Um, and so it's it's, and we talk about it all the time, just educating people as much as possible to get involved, yep. mm -hmm. learn the process, mm -hmm. show up to the meetings, um, and, and understand how the whole process works. But also understand, and too... And how they can get involved and maybe affect that process. Yeah, it, absolutely. You know, and, and to also understand that the people who are serving on these boards, you know, they have rules to follow. Yeah. You know, and... And actually, for good reason, most of it is not a subjective process, mm -hmm. but is a very mm -hmm. objective uh, process. Yeah. Um, so that it's not just people's opinions or feelings or, or whatever. Feelings yeah. Determining, yeah. making decisions, mm -hmm. but that it, there's a there's a whole process to everything. Mm -hmm. um, you they know, have to work within certain parameters. Yeah, and I know people aren't happy about the fact that the currently proposed Stonehenge Workforce Housing Project. Mm -hmm got in under the old ordinance where it is, mm -hmm. um, because under the new ordinance, it mm -hmm. would not have been allowed right. in that location. Yeah. But the good news is that in fixing that ordinance, um, you know, we haven't had a similar situation occur mm -hmm. since we fixed the ordinance two yeah. years ago. Yeah. Um, and there's no one else sitting back there that got grand, kind of, kind of not really grandfathered, but yeah. sort of sitting there waiting. No, that was already there. So we're that's nope, the it. only one that this was in the pipeline before we changed it was this, okay. was this project. So okay, um, so yeah, I mean it's you know, but I, I can't encourage people to enough to get involved mm -hmm. and. Agreed. And really understand. Mm -hmm. And I can't encourage people enough to watch the show and find out what's going All right. on. Right. Yeah. What else is happening? What else do we I'll have happening, the Dottie? Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's see. There's a lot of tree clearing oh, too going much on tree around the power lines. Yeah. Um, part of that Everywhere. is, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, there's tree clearing around the construction sites, yeah. and uh, but there's a lot of power line tree clearing mm -hmm. going yeah. on, and that's yeah. Which mainly. Which is necessary. It's mainly due to um, 
you know, there's the Merrimack Valley system mm -hmm. uh, reliability upgrade mm -hmm. project that Eversource is, is currently undertaking. So part of it's due to that. And the other part of it is just clearing out vegetation mm -hmm. so that trees don't continue to fall uh, on power lines during bad storms. Um, you know, we had some storms this winter, but yeah. there, were, there weren't Many widespread outdoor, no, power outages. No, there were not. I, I noticed that throughout the winter. And that's the, that's the, the good part of the clearing. And that, well, that also, I think, um, kudos to Eversource for being on top yep. of the roadways as well to keep right. those trees trimmed and yeah I mean whatever. I know people don't like to see all the trees getting cut down don't. And, yeah. you know I actually did ask them to cut down a tree did you really yeah well they there's a tree there was a tree in front of my house and and the tree came up like this and then there were the power lines so the tree went like that mm -hmm. and I said you know I think enough of the V mm -hmm. you can just have the whole thing they were thrilled yeah I'm sure they were <laughs> they were so excited you know until we find a way to, to move to you know wireless uh, power you know, or, yeah, even underground. It's we do. There are some. It's got to come up through are, somewhere. It does. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so you know, it's mm -hmm. it's going to be an evolving thing over time. Yeah. But as are of all right of our now, new communities underground now? The, the, not all of them. Can no. we do that? Can we make that an ordinance at some point? I don't know. It's something I. You know, something we should yeah, probably. I can look think into about. that, Dottie, yeah. to see. But uh, I, yeah. I don't know if yeah. we could. As I mean, a going town, backwards is so expensive, but going forward. Yeah. That's a little bit easier. I'd have to see if, if that's something that we could uh, dictate mm -hmm. by ordinance mm -hmm. on whether or not new developments had to be uh, all underground power mm -hmm. or not. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I know there's... And cable and Well, I know everything. there's been issues with the areas that are underground that when something does go mm -hmm. wrong, um, mm -hmm. you know, they got to go digging and it's not as easily fixed because it is underground. Now, the benefit of having it underground, of course, is- It doesn't go out as often. You're not gonna have a, a tree, have hopefully, yeah. uh, <laughs> fall underground, right? So, but it's something, yeah. I mean, well, I know that ever since my daughter and my son-in-law moved before the winter started, they've been just bragging on the fact that, uh, nope, they're not going out, gonna go without power because it's underground. Yeah, and? So, okay. And were they right? They were right. It didn't go out all winter. Oh, that's good. Oh. That's good. Well, mine's underground, but mm -hmm. it did go out during did it the go last out? storm. Yeah. So yeah. it's so not. That's why I said depends on where it comes up. Well, I was going to say it's yeah. not always the case that. Yeah. Well, it's where it comes up, but it's also what it's connected to, mm -hmm. um, because you know there was mm -hmm. a, a pole that came down right around Otterson. Mm -hmm. um, now, if you go down Otterson and in the area of the Kings, those are all underground. Um, but a pole came down on Artisan, which connects to the Kings, and so the power still Went goes out. out. Yeah. So yeah. it's not and always the case. Had, we just had an accident on the 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 um, coast, close to the coast, a couple of days ago, up north towards Maine, uh -huh. and it was such a serious accident, and it threw out, it it messed up internet and television and phones and. All kinds of things for about 24 hours. Oh, that's hours. right. Yes, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. especially yeah. Fairpoint. And customers, that wasn't I very think, close were. to us. Yeah, so, so it's all connected. Yeah. It is all yeah. we're all connected. Yeah. So what what else is important on your list there that uh, we need to get to? Um, you know, the other thing I'll I'll mention, Dottie, is uh, our finance director Doug Smith yes. gave a, an update at the mm -hmm. last town council meeting mm -hmm. about the finances of, of the town right now for fiscal year 17. Uh, town's in very good good position um, despite us increasing our budget revenues um, for this this budget and mm -hmm. cycle um, it, it looks like we may end up exceeding our our estimated budget revenues by at least half a million dollars cool. um, which is pretty significant yeah. and it also looks if like you're gonna, if you're gonna have like a, a not a mistake but you know <laughs> Well, that's a good you're way to right. go. <laughs> yes, it is. You always want to be on the plus side, yeah. not the negative. Yeah. Uh, and on the appropriation side, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, again, the departments are very well managed. Mm -hmm. um, it looks like we could be returning uh, perhaps half a million dollars um, back okay. at the end of. Seems to be the magic number. Yeah, so the good <laughs> news about that is, of course, that goes into our surplus, mm -hmm. which then in the f following budget cycle will turn around and use it to offset having to raise additional taxes. Mm -hmm. So it's not like 
when that goes into surplus, it just sits there. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not like we go, oh, surplus, where can we spend it? No, that definitely isn't the case. Um, you know, what, what we do do is that we look at, uh, for instance, in the public works budget, mm -hmm. um, you know, if they're light in a certain area. Last year, there was, we had a very good winter last year, mm -hmm. so we had monies left over from snow removal, significant mm -hmm. a lot of, mm -hmm. you know, a good amount of money left yeah. over. So what we did before the end of the year is we encumbered those monies and put it toward roadway maintenance. Perfect. Yeah. Which, yeah. to me, makes sense to do something like mm -hmm. that, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, similarly, we'll be doing something like that this year with Public Works. Mm -hmm. um, the solid waste budget yeah. uh, came in less than where we had budgeted it for. Mm -hmm. So we'll take some of those monies and use that towards maintaining our roads, um, you know, this summer. So, um, but other than that... Oh, God, more construction. No <laughs> kidding. <laughs> oh, people want their roads to, to be, you know, be in good shape, though. So we think Some that's, do, some don't. That's money well spent. I'm sure you've had complaints about, from people about, why did you fix my road? I have to be honest, I haven't gotten that. You have not? I have not gotten oh, that Oh, there have been yet. complaints, yeah. No, maybe in, yeah. In, in the past, but I have yeah. not received the complaint. Because of, people end up picking up their... Um, uh, speed when the road's a little better they go a little faster sometimes so that happens but yeah no. yeah so unless you have something else pressing here i think uh no dotty i think we covered a lot of areas I think we did. and uh, i'm sure we'll have new and exciting topics mm -hmm. to cover in fact i'll plan on bringing lisa with me yes uh, okay so for the, the may, next time we're on for the may, may show yeah, yeah absolutely that's great wonderful be good to know her and let the town get to know her. I think that'll be and great. That'll be terrific. So would, you will come back in May then. I will. All right. And you'll continue to be transparent? Absolutely, okay. Dottie. Hey, can't ask for more than that. Thank you for watching. I very much appreciate you being with us. And I hope that if you have any issues you would like us to discuss, that you will let us know. The information for contacting us is at the end of the show. And we will see you again in May.